so hello everyone so this is this will be the last topic in general embryology it have almost covered all the important topics of general embryology and uh, placenta is one such important topic like the amount of information that you are going to give is very minimal but you should have an overall understanding so this is going to involve you no know, events that had happened at every week of development right now this picture is very familiar during the initial classes yes i have put this picture so this is depicting the 13th day development yes how did i identify the presence of primary villi then the trophoblastic lacunae that had been communicated with the maternal sinusoids so the lacunae will appear around the 11th day and in the 13th day like almost from the 9th to 10th day lacunae will appear and it will communicate with the maternal sinusoids in the 13th day right and yes i am able to appreciate the extra embryonic mesoderm right and then this is the chorionic cavity and this is what is called as the chorionic plate so the mesoderm that is going to know enclose the chorionic cavity is called as the chorionic plate and this is the amniotic cavity and all that so why did i put this picture is i wanted you all to focus on primary villi Yes. So, what is primary villi? Yes, if you remember, it is the finger-like projection of the cytotrophoblast, which is covered by the syncytiotrophoblast. Yes, it is covered by the layer of syncytiotrophoblast. So, this was called as the primary villi. So, the villi, the finger-like projections, has got three stages of development. So, the first stage, that is the primary villi, happens in the thirteenth day. Then, subsequently, you get the secondary and the tertiary villi. So, we will see. what happens so this is the primary villi where i got the cytotrophoblastic cells which is surrounded by the syncytiotrophoblast so this primary villi is been no uh, intervened by the mesodermal cells so from this picture can you make out this is the mesoderm that is the cells making up the chorionic plate these mesoderm is going to extend into these villi projections so the primary villi that is been no uh, invaded by these mesodermal cells is called as Yes, it is called as the secondary villi. Yes, it is called as secondary villi. The tertiary villi. Yes, it's the secondary villi along with the vessels. Right, so along with the vessels is called as the tertiary villi. So now, as the uh, pregnancy goes on, so slowly you will have the mesodermal core, which is going to invaginate into the primary villi. Then the angiogenesis is going to happen, and then you have the villus capillary being appeared. right so this is these are the three stages of villus development so what happens is so simultaneously all these events happen and you get a mass amount of finger like projections around the trophoblastic layer yes so this is a picture which i wanted to show to tell you that these are the intervillous spaces yes so these are the lacunae that had been you no know, uh, filled with the sinusoidal blood yes and this is my chorionic plate let me use a pointer so this is my chorionic plate and what i am able to appreciate in this picture is the axillomic cyst appears very small and i am able to appreciate some blood vessels in the chorionic plate yes can you appreciate in this picture any blood vessels no we are not able to see any blood vessels here but as time progresses i am able to appreciate even the blood vessels in the chorionic plate so what happens is the inter villi space yes they are well developed and it has been communicated with the sinusoidal that is the maternal blood at the same time in the chorionic plate the vessels begin to appear and as days goes by these vessels in the chorionic plate is going to communicate with the villus vessel so this is my villi these are the inter villi space this is my villi and just now i told you tertiary villi is filled with blood vessels so what happens is these villi and like blood vessels in the villi and the blood vessels in the chorionic plate will start communicating with each other as yes, can you appreciate the picture so these are the intervillous spaces and this is the sinusoidal blood these are my villi and these are the villi vessels vessels in the tertiary villi and this is my chorion chorionic plate as yes, can you make out and this is my connecting stalk this is my chorionic villi so what happens is as the blood vessels appear in the chorionic plate and it is well developed the vessels in the tertiary villi will begin to communicate with the vessels in the chorionic plate and the connecting stalk so connecting stalk is what is the future uh, fate of connecting stalk yes very good it is umbilical cord 
So from the um, so the villi is going to communicate with the vessels in the chorionic plate as well as in the umbilical vessels. So what happens is, can you see very beautifully? We have discussed about how the you no know, circulation is slowly established. Yes, we started with the trophoblastic lacunae. We spoke about the sinusoidal communication. Then we saw angiogenesis happen in the villi, and that we called as tertiary villi. At the same time, the angiogenesis happen even in the chorionic plate. As a result, blood vessels are formed. So the blood vessels that are formed in the villi, as well as in the chorionic plate and the connecting sac, are all going to communicate with each other. And yes, finally, it establishes a circulation between the placenta and then the, I mean, the embryo. Right. So this is the circulatory aspect of placenta. Now let us get on to how a placenta is formed. See, mostly it can be asked in a viva question. So what you have to know is the structures that is going to give rise to placenta. So if you take almost from the fourth to fifth month, right? We can say fourth month, the placenta is going to have two parts. Yes, what are the parts? One is the fetal part. Yes, one is the fetal part. Another one is your maternal part. Right? One is the fetal part. Another one is the maternal part. So for understanding these two parts, you have to know certain structures in each of them. Now, with respect to fetal part, what you have to know is about this chorionic villi. So what is this chorionic villi is basically whatever we discussed so far, the villi structures, right? Those are all chorionic villi because it is going to get along the chorion, right? So this is the chorionic plate and I'll be able to appreciate villi all around the chorion. That is why it is called as a chorionic villi. So this is my embryonic pole. So this will be my embryonic pole and this is my a embryonic pole. Yes, so this is the embryonic pole. This is the a embryonic pole. Now, what is the basic thing that you can appreciate here? Yes, along the embryonic pole, I'm able to see lots of villi. Yes, I'm able to see dense amount of villi. But whereas if you take along the a embryonic pole, I hardly see any villi, right? So the chorionic villi along the embryonal pole, yes, the chorionic villi along the embryonic pole, which are very densely seen, is called as chorion frondosum. A very important viva question or an MCQ question. So what is chorion frond frondosum? It is the densely arranged chorionic villi along the embryonic pole of the fetus. Whereas in the embryonic pole, I hardly see any villi and I call that region as the chorion leaf, right? The chorion leaf. So with respect to fetal part, yes, what is the structure that you have to know? Yes, it is the chorionic frondosum or chorion frondosum. Now, with respect to maternal part, you have to know structures like decidua. So whenever I say a terminology called decidua, you have to immediately tell me that it is related to maternal part, right? So decidua is the endometrium, right? It's the part of endometrium that involves in pregnancy. That is called as the decidua. Now I have got three deciduas. I've got decidua basalis, decidua capsularis, decidua parietalis. So out of these three structures, one structure is going to combine with chorion frondosum to form the placenta. Yes, from the picture is very obvious. So this is the chorion frondosum. This is the decidua basalis. And this portion of the embryo is what is going to form or of the mother's womb and the embryo is going to form placenta. So most important neat question or MCQ question in your uh, university exam can be, which of the following structures form placenta? Fetal part? Yes, it is your chorion frondosum. And from the maternal part, it is decidua basalis. So combination of these two, Right, the chorion frondosum along with the decidua basalis, it forms the placenta. Right, so this is again a picture to explain you about the placenta. Yes, can you appreciate this is the embryonic pole, and I'm able to see so many uh, villi projections. This is called as the chorion frondosum, and this is the uterine cavity. Yes, can you appreciate this lumen here? This is the uterine lumen. So, we'll see what happens here now. This region is my amnion. The yellow shaded one is my amniotic cavity. I'm going to use a light green color now. Yes, this region is my chorionic cavity that is formed by the 
extra embryonic mesoderm yes so that is my chorionic cavity and the region with the yellow shaded one is this is my amniotic cavity so initially right during the early stages of pregnancy like when the placenta begins to form the amniotic cavity and the chorionic cavity are going to be significantly present i'll be able to appreciate both the cavities right so what are the three parts of the maternal endometrium is decidua basalis decidua parietalis decidua capsularis what i want you all to know is the decidua capsularis right it is going to separate the chorionic cavity so it is going to separate the chorionic cavity from the uterine lumen this is the uterine lumen right let me shade it with the red color so this region is my uterine lumen and this portion let me use a pointer this is my decidua capsularis so the decidua capsularis yes it is going to separate the chorionic cavity from the uterine lumen but what happens is as time progresses yes as time progresses the chorionic cavity yes the chorionic cavity and the membrane will fuse with the amniotic cavity it will form one single cavity lined by a single membrane are you able to get what i am trying to tell yes so this is my amniotic cavity and i have got the chorionic cavity and no this is my uterine lumen this is my uterine lumen and the uterine lumen is separated from the chorion by a layer called as decidua basal or decidua capsularis right now what happens as time progresses the chorionic cavity and the amniotic cavity along with their membranes will fuse to form a single cavity with a single membrane so at that time what will happen is this decidua capsularis will disappear will degenerate so what will happen yes immediately this single membrane will communicate with the decidua parietalis so that single membrane can you appreciate in this picture yes fused decidua parietalis the chorion leaf and the amnion is it directly communicates with the decidua parietalis and this membrane is called as the chorio amnion membrane it is called as the chorion amnion membrane Yes, so when the baby is delivered, the baby will come out of this membrane. So this membrane, so here you will be having the fluid. So this is the membrane covering. So the fetus will rupture this membrane and come out. I'll show in the next picture. So, and here if you take simultaneously the uh, the you no know, decidua basalis was you no know, developing and it communicated the decidua. Uh, so I mean the chorionic frondosum was developing and it communicated the decidua basalis. right so this is what is called placenta so simultaneously the chorion frondosum and the decidua basalis establishes a connection right and then inga vande if you take simultaneously the decidua parietalis at fused and it had formed a chorion amnion membrane right so this is what happens in the placental development so just see this picture yes can you appreciate the baby is no packed inside a membrane like structure the where the doctor is holding Yes, that is the chorio allantoic membrane, and here I am sorry, chorio not chorio amnion membrane, not allantoic chorio amnion membrane, and here I am able to appreciate a fluid, right? This is about the chorio amnion membrane. So what exactly happens with placenta? As I have told you, I have got two parts: the fetal part, maternal part. Yes. So this is a very good picture to you know, conclude your placenta answer. This is the maternal part. This is the fetal part. Yes, the chorionic plates. So see fetal part. now what happens is there are two plates like how a chorionic plate is there similarly there is a formation of something called as the decidual plate so this decidual plate is going to separate the maternal and the villus okay so it is going to you know separate the maternal part from the fetal part and here you have the villi so all these are your villi and these are your intervillous spaces so this is a villi and these are your intervillous spaces now what happens is from the decidual plate there is an extension that goes downward and that extension is called as decidual septum is yes, that is called as decidual septum 
So this decidual septum it extends from the decidual plate downwards. Yes, it extends from the decidual plate downwards, right? And it almost stops. Just listen carefully. It almost stops very close to chorionic plate, right? This is a very important point you have to write. From the decidual plate, you have got an extension that travels downwards. That is called decidual septum. It is not going to extend all the way to the chorionic plate. It is going to stop somewhere before the chorionic plate. So what? Is the significance of this gap? Is yes, this significance will allow the blood to communicate from one intervillous space through the villi to the another intervillous space? So this is one intervillous space. This is another intervillous space. This is my villi. So this decidual septum that is being opened slightly here, it enables the circulation of blood to like it enables the blood to no circulate among the intervillous spaces. So it basically helps in communication of. The intervillous spaces. Yes, and here if you see, just we'll see this picture. Yes, so I have one more thing to say here, and this decidual septum, along with an advantage of providing a communication between the no intervillous spaces, it is also going to divide the placenta into so many cotyledons. It is going to divide the placenta into so many cotyledons. So, if you take this picture, yes, this is a this. I I believe this this is the residual uh, septum. So, this is a septum. So, this is a cotyledon, right? And then this is a cotyledon. Yes. Then here I'll be able to appreciate a cotyledon. So, I'm able to appreciate so many cotyledons here, right? So the residual septa it also no divides the placenta into so many compartments or what I call it as cotyledons. Yes, yes. So if placenta is asked what you are supposed to write, is you are going to start by talking about the villi. Yes, the tertiary villi. Then the blood vessels are going to communicate with the blood vessels of the chorionic plate, right? And slowly it is going to you know establish a circulation. Then you have to talk about the placenta. The fourth month of development contains two parts: the fetal part and the maternal part. So the fetal part which contributes to placenta is the chorion frondosum. So what is chorion frondosum? It's the chorionic villi that is densely present in the embryonic pole of the fetus. Yes, and maternal part. If you take it, is the decidua basalis that contributes to uh, placenta formation. So what is happening here is the decidua basalis and the chorion frondosum. They are going to interdigitate with each other to form the placenta. At the same time, what happens to the other things? So initially, you'll be having the chorionic cavity and the amniotic cavity, which is separated from the uterine lumen by the decidua capsularis. But as the no fetal growth happens, this chorionic cavity merges with the amniotic cavity, forms a single cavity lined by a single membrane. Yes, what is the name? Chorion amnion membrane. Then decidual capsularis is going to be ruptured and directly communicates with the decidua parietalis, and simultaneously the chorion frondosum is going to fuse the decidua basalis to form the placenta. Right? This is the chorion amniotic membrane that I already told, and you are supposed to talk about decidual plate which is formed that separates the maternal from the fetal part, and you have got the decidual septum that is going to get into the No, that is going to run along the intervillous spaces. It is going to stop somewhere between the, I mean, somewhere just before the chorionic plate, so that it provides a communication between the two intervillous spaces. Yes, very good. Along with that, the decidual septum is also going to, you no, know, divide the placenta into so many compartments, or what I call it as cotyledons. Yes. So this is the placenta, and this is my umbilical cord. With respect to umbilical cord, I don't want to, you know, uh, bombard you with much information. What you have to know is the umbilical cord is it is going to be derived from the connecting stalks. So it contains umbilical vessels. So you'll be having how many arteries and veins? So umbilical uh, cord it contains two arteries. Sorry, uh, it contains one artery. It contains one vein, two arteries. Right, along with what I want you all to know is something called Wharton's jelly, so which is a mucopolysaccharide uh, structure that is found along with the umbilical cord. So initially, if you take, you will be having the vital duct, right, along with the intestinal loops. So what is the story? Is initially the abdomen is not well developed, so the intestinal loop. If you remember my previous class, we would have talked, uh, spoke about the 
uh, yolk stock, right? So what happens along with no folding? Yes, the this is the yolk stock, right? Where we have the vitellin duct that is going to no communicate with the yolk sac. So what happens is along with the umbilical cord, you will be having your vitellin duct, the intestinal loops, everything coming into the umbilical cord. But as the abdomen will is well developed, the intestinal loops will all get to the abdomen. So what will be remaining is just this vessel, the one vein, two arteries, along with the mucopolysaccharide disease, warts and stenosis. So just know these structures; it is more than enough, right? So main important thing: what structure gives rise to umbilical cord? Is yes, right from my third class. I am repeating: it is connecting stock. It is connecting stock, right? So, what are the functions? Just for your exam purpose, you just have to write. As everybody knows, it is exchange of gases, right? Then along with it, exchange of nutrients and electrolytes. Then you have got an endocrine role. So, with respect to endocrine role, is what you have to know: progesterone. So, initially, till the placenta is formed, the corpus luteum is going to take care of progesterone secretion. But once the No uh, placenta is well developed. The progesterone is going to be secreted by the placenta along with the estrogen. Then it's CG. If you remember in my initial class, the second class, the second week of development, I would have told you the syncytiotrophoblast will release the HCG, and that is helping us to detect the no, no uh, confirm pregnancy via urine test, right? So in the eighth to tenth day, if I take the urine sample, I can find HCG. In the blood, I mean, in the urine, and after that, I'll be able to find it in serum, and I'll confirm the pregnancy. So that HCG hormone, once the placenta begins to develop, HCG is also going to be secreted by the placenta, along with you no know, placental lactogen, then somatomammotrophin, which belongs to somatomammotrophin groups. All these are the hormones that are secreted by the placenta. So these are the different functions of placenta that I want to tell. So with this, I have completed the general embryology part. Like every single aspect is not important, right? So what I want you all to do is see in the embryological part, I have not covered the clinical much, right? For I have covered just about the you no know, neural tube defects because that is very important. Apart from that, every single topic that I have put has got some uh, clinicals. So only if you understand the embryological aspect, you will be able to understand the clinicals. Purposefully, I do not include clinicals because I want you all to understand the embryology first. And with your understanding, please go and refer the clinicals. You will understand, right? So, with this general embryology is done, I hope you found this general embryology useful. And maybe after some time, uh, after a short break, we will continue with the systemic embryology. So, you just study general embryology along with your anatomy. Systemic embryology, we have very limited stuffs, so that we will uh, you no know, do some time before exams also. That's not a big deal. So, but general embryology is very important for you to understand. So, just keep studying. Right, I will meet you in some other video. Until then, take care. Thank you. Bye.